Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. And on the last episode, we uh, got into Ganon's Tower here and uh, discovered it's not too difficult. Um, could be worse, but let me go ahead and get across this little gap here. Um, you don't have to do it this way, um, but I figure I might as well. I'm going to use these teleportation tiles to move ahead a little bit, and um, it can be a little confusing um, on how to go ahead in these uh, little teleportation tiles, but it's not bad. Now, you can't really go this way. It's kind of a dead end, so let's go back one room here. Also, I wanted to mention that there is a way to... Um, up the wrong way. There is a way to get ahead in the next room, but um, I couldn't really figure out how to do it. I saw it on a speed run, and it's at the end of this room here. Uh, what you do is you kind of Pegasus jump, or Pegasus dash, uh, not Pegasus jump, Pegasus dash off the side here, and you can skip this, but I wasn't able to get that to work. I think you may have to just bomb yourself into the corner. Um, oh well. And you can skip ahead a little bit, and uh, this only saves you like a few seconds, so... I figured it wasn't really that important to show. So, anyways, we're back into this room here, and our lovely um, octopus little enemies have respawned, of course. And I like that they put an enemy here so you can kind of uh, get a hint that there's an invisible bridge there, or invisible tiles. Now, you don't have to use either magic or, you know, light a torch to get across there. Um, of course, you can do a, um, a bomb jump, but. Uh, can't remember if I showed you that in the last episode, or I'll, if, I don't, if not, I'll show you in this episode. Um, anyways, up there we don't have the big key yet, so we're going to have to find it. But I was just showing you that it loops around there. Anyways, what you can do here, um, get rid of that guy here, is you can use the either magic or bombos or something like that. Um, so I'm going to use the either and kind of show you what the bridge looks like. And see here, you can do a bomb jump across that diagonal. Um... If you want to. You don't have to. Now the goal is, uh, or the point is you're supposed to keep using this either magic over and over again until you kind of figure out where you need to go. And it does eat up all your magic, and I don't like that. And you can see there's kind of a little gap there. So it kind of tricks you. And once you get to this part, you could probably memorize it and get across, but... You know. That's one way to get across. And of course you can light this, and um, it'll show you the path. Now this looks like a dead end, and if you thought it was a dead end, well, you'd be wrong. There's some stuff in here, and I want this fairy first. Um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, um, you see that it gives you a bomb there? Oh, come here. There we go. It gives you a bomb here, and, um, and there, and there, and probably down there too. Yep. And so what it's trying to tell you is that if you bomb one of these areas here, you will likely uncover a secret. So let's try that out. I like the little Ganon statue there. Anyways, if you go down here, um, you can see why we need the silver arrows. And let's see how easy they are, these armor statues are, to take out with the silver arrows. Let's see here. Yep, yeah, one shot. I love it. Of course, I have an icy floor here, so that sucks, but it's not bad. Now, you can go north or you can go uh, west, and um, I'm going to try to show you both directions. If only we had an ice ring or something for this game. No, we don't. That would be neat, but uh, I don't even know of a game genie code that would turn off the ice physics. Now, here we get a whole bunch of fairies, which... You know, if you need them. Which we don't. I'm satisfied with the number of fairies I have now. Now, let's go back up here. Now, we don't have the big key just yet, but that does loop around, so... Now, we're going to have to get back to those armor statues, and uh, we could 
use the ether magic again and again and again, but we don't need to do that. There's a little bit of a shortcut, so let me go ahead and show you how that works. Uh, grab your bomb here, just go off to the corner here, um, right about there, and do the old sword technique. Put out a bomb, and then once it explodes at the right time, just, uh, yeah, it'll push you over. And then once you're over, you can just run across and be done with it. So let's go back down here again. In case I need these, um... There we go. That's a good place to get a fairy because it's captive. I mean, it can't really go anywhere. I think that's the only bombable floor in that room. Um, the other floors are not bombable, so they do limit where you're going to um, drop down in here. Fortunately, we've got so many arrows, and these guys are so easy that, um, yeah, we're not going to have any problems. So we went west, so let's go north now. I said let's go north. North, north. Come on, Link. There you go. Anyways, let's see what's in here. We've got the big key, so what's what else have we got in this room here? Alright, we got some arrows. That's good. And some bombs, so hey. Better than nothing. I'll take them. Now you could uh, magic mirror yourself back up, uh, but, you know, if you remember if we went west, that was kind of a shortcut to the uh, big treasure chest, so yeah, we'll go that way. And I don't need any fairies, so... Yeah, we're good. I don't know if those fairies respawn or not. Uh, my guess is that they do. But either way, you've got four of them. Now let's go back this way. Now I'm going to bomb myself across here again. Now you don't have to do this, but um, I just think it's cool. I'm pretty sure there's another way to get to that spot. And if not, then I guess I'm just wrong. So. I mean, that's the way I always got across it. I always cheated that way. I don't know if it's intentional that they mean for you to do it that way or not, but, you know. Whatever. Now, there's also a little bit of a uh, secret here. And uh, a whole bunch of switches. And the switch we need... Let me get rid of this Moldorm here. I said, let me get rid of this Moldorm. There we go. The switch we need is up here. Here, it's just kind of a dead end. There's really not much in this room, but I wanted to show you this room anyway, so. Um, it is kind of a room full of traps, though, with a lot of floor masters, so, you know, I really wouldn't worry about it. I mean, to me, it's just kind of stupid. I mean, it's not stupid, I'm saying it's just pointless to um, waste time in this room. But, you know, I just wanted to show you what was in it. I'm trying to get rid of this floor master here. I'm just going to leave the room. There's nothing else in here of any value. Anyways, back to the beginning we go. And now that we've got the big key, we can head to the second half of the dungeon. And there really isn't much to the second half. Um, the enemies are not too terrible, I think. Come here. Come here. There we go. And what we can do here is we can kind of take a look at the room next to us. And we can see that there's some stuff over there, but uh, we can't get there just yet. I like that they're um, showing us different things here. And with the silver arrows, you know, it's not much of a problem with these guys. More spikes. Of course.
Now we're gonna have to flip this switch again and move south. But if only there was a way to get across this little shuttered door. Now the only thing I don't like is that uh, when you jump on top of these things like um, you can't really jump on top of like Link's Awakening, you know? But uh, I guess it was a mechanic they added later. That's actually an interesting mechanic where they did that, where you could have different levels of the um, dungeon there. Now you've got these guys, and I guess you could use an, an, a Bombos medallion or something to get rid of the enemies, but I'm not going to worry about it. Because we could just silver arrow them. That's why I got so many arrows. I mean, it's not like I'm going to run out of arrows anytime soon, you know. And no, I'm not. Now, that's one thing about the mirror shield I really like. It blocks just about everything. Um, you can see there it was blocking the lasers, it's blocking that, the little fire thing. But you have to face, of course, the direction of the attack, obviously. But we got our arrows back, so that's nice. I'll, I'll take it. And thankfully with the red mail, the, um, or the red tunic, whatever you want to call it, um, we can take a lot more damage. So those lasers and those other attacks, the fire attacks from those guys, they're not doing much to us. But I do like in this dungeon, there's so many levels to it. It's a really nice, complicated dungeon. Kind of like uh, Death Mountain, you know. And the Great Palace. At least they give us a giant um, level to deal with, which is, hey, I like it. It's very Zelda to do that. Oh, come on. I'm just going to get out of the way. I don't think you're supposed to really get rid of those guys, but uh, I think they're there just to trip you up. <laughs> Boy, I almost made it through their unscathed. No, just kidding. Yeah, that sucked. But I'm alive. Hey, better than not being alive. Here, just run across here, but watch out for these guys. Easy peasy. It's starting to remind me of Star, uh, Star Tropics a bit. Now this is kind of a cool little uh, mechanic. They're teaching you about the Pegasus Dash. So you just kind of dash over here, and there you go. And it's not like we have a rock feather or anything. And here we got some extra fairies, so that's why I wasn't worried about getting uh, hit by all the enemies. And a magic decanter, if we need it. That's why I'm not worried about the... Uh, the magic, um, the medicine, or medicine of magic, or whatever you call it, because this dungeon gives you so many magic decanters, and you don't have to use magic that much, that it's not a problem. Now I got these guys again, just like in the, uh, Thieves' Den, but... Yeah, I like that this dungeon, they're throwing you all of the, uh, throwing you the, all the enemies... Well, not all of them, but most of the enemies that we faced before. And it reminds me of a lot of the palaces. And that's a good final dungeon, you know. Something that explores all of the things that you've encountered before. It makes you use all of the um, weapons and things like that. Let's freeze these guys. You don't have to do that, but I figured... Really didn't show that off very much, so... Oh, and by the way, I wanted to mention, if you guys notice that I get something wrong in the commentary, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I'm not going to be upset about it. Because something, sometimes you just get things wrong, you make mistakes, so... You know. I don't mind that at all. Whoa, get out of the way of that. And go down. Down, down, I said down. Some hearts here if you need it. Of course, it really doesn't hurt, uh, sorry, help much if we, <laughs> you know, walk into a whole bunch of crap trying to get it, but it's all right. I don't need that. I'm going to go on. Kind of a nice little trap room there. Um, This is easy, just, yeah. You can avoid it. Now we've got another um, enemy. So I like they give us the uh, enemies that we faced in the other dungeons, you know. 
gave us the armor statues, they gave us this guy from the Desert Palace, so you can pretty much guess that we're probably going to see something from the Tower of Hera. And I like that they limited the boss enemies here because they could have just given us a lot more and given us the ones from the other palaces in the Dark World, but that would have been too much, you know. And I'm glad they didn't do that. It made it just challenging enough, so it's not too annoying. Although the bosses in this game are really not that difficult once you get the, um, the Golden Sword. Now this is kind of cool. The easy way to deal with this guy, these guys, is just do this. Kind of a nice little puzzle there. Now if you're quick, you can take these guys out pretty quickly. Yeah, I know. If you're quick, you can take them out quickly. But what I mean is you can take them out in the first, um... In the first, um... Few seconds if you, uh... Get your Cane of Samaria out quicker than I did. Here, what you want to do is just kind of do that. Wait for them to show up. And you can do that too. You don't have to use the Cane of Samaria, but you might as well try. Now you got this part. I just kind of run. You could have used probably the magic cape here, but I'm conserving my magic. Now here, um, another torch puzzle. And it's pretty obvious what we need to do here. And, um... Honestly, this torch puzzle is probably a whole hell of a lot easier than some of the other ones I've seen in this game. Now, if there's, um... If there are, um... I was gonna say, if there are, like, hacks or whatever to link to the past that you want me to see or whatever, just let me know. Um... And I'll definitely look into it. There we go. Yeah, I would save that bottom torch for when you get away from it, because it's easier that way. Anyways, this wraps up this episode, so thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.